Do you know where your food comes from? You ever met the farmer that grows it? Do you find yourself traveling further to get to the grocery store? Well, there's a growing phenomenon known as a food desert. When an urban grocery store closes, it leaves behind an expanding produce vacuum, leaving people with no access to fresh, healthy food. And yet, 80% of our population lives in the cities. And at the same time, we've grown increasingly disconnected from our sources of food, relying fully on distant, large-scale food production. We've lost the art of growing our own. And if your local grocery store closed, you'd likely find yourself in a food desert too. Rashid Nuri aims to change that, one person, one family, one community at a time. Rashid is the founder of the Truly Living Well Center for Natural Urban Agriculture. And Rashid, a lot of that has to do with education, and that happens right here around this table. Oh, yes it does. We, we have a lot of time that we spend sitting here talking and teaching and training. Education is the importance of our organization. It's what we do at an Educational Institute. We are doing the work of urban agriculture. It's much more than just talking about it. We're demonstrating how it can be done, showing people, teaching people. As I said, we're training. So we grow food. Our first leg is, is the quality food, which we sell at our market. We have two markets a week. We sell the food. We have a full share CSA, community supported agriculture. People pay us in advance. We have full share, half share, senior discounted share. People who are on food snaps, SNAP program, for every dollar they spend, we give them two dollars worth of food. And if you're hungry, I'll just give you the food. And that is a platform that allows us to teach and educate, which is our main thing. So we have four two-week sessions of summer camp. Reaching the children is the best way to change the world, to get the children's minds focused right. They'll, they'll bring their parents along. We give classes. We have our urban grower training programs. We have a young growers training program where we bring people in for uh, 12 weeks, six months. We do it differently each time. And through that process, the output of all that is community building, community development, economic development, job creation. I view my work as a pedagogy of transformation or transformative pedagogy. We change both people and places. So the folk that come through here, we, you can see it. You can feel the change that takes place. In, we're able to feed people, distribute quality food. So how are people at the mercy of the grocery store? The USDA has designated certain neighborhoods as food deserts. I really don't like that language because the immediately you say food deserts, most people get a picture in their mind of, of poor black folks or brown folks who only have a computer food like McDonald's or a KFC, or the only fresh food they're going to get is the banana or the apple from the gas station. When that's really not the issue, the issue is food self-sufficiency, food sovereignty, access to food. Sally Ann, who lives in a poor black community, may have to travel, take two buses and a train to get to quality food. But Miss Ann, who lives up in a rich neighborhood, has the same distance to go to get quality food, but she can jump in her Mercedes or Infinity and drive. So it's about the economic realities that create some of this difficulty that people have in access to the food. Quality food must be a right not a privilege. And in this country today, quality food is a privilege. We are changing that paradigm. Well, how would you encourage someone to get started? Say they connected with the ideas that you share with us and they don't garden for themselves. What are the ways that they can get started doing something in, in well, a step toward truly living well? Well, first I suggest people, wherever they are, whatever they do, grow something. You can do it in your backyard, your front yard, your balcony, your window, kitchen windows. Put, put something, get some dirt around and grow something. Just herbs for your kitchen, uh, or a tomato plant in a bucket. Then from there, you can build a garden if you like. You can certainly come out here and get food from us. We encourage folks to come out. Um, but I think do for self, self-sufficiency is the most important thing. Now, it's amazing to see the changes that have taken place over the last decade. A lot of folk have now become foodies and, and it's the hip thing to do. But I think that what's hip today we have to institutionalize so it becomes a way of life, just not a fad. We're beyond this being a fad. People are serious about their food, becoming more conscious of their food. We want to live longer. You know, you got a lot of people worried about planets, say we're destroying the planet with the climate change. Mother Earth is resilient. Human beings are not. We have to be careful we don't kill ourselves, make ourselves extinct.
Thank you so much for your time. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for having and inviting me to your house. <laughs> I've enjoyed it. Shop, grow, and eat local. That's truly living well. And it's also another easy way to be green. At Green Shorts, we tell these stories because we believe that we all have to work together toward a greener future. Our mission is to help you see green so you can be green and save a little green. Thanks for watching. Please like and share this video to help spread the message. And if it's your first time here, please subscribe for new videos every Thursday and Saturday.